Yo, what's good? Hope you're all doing well. Now, today, I don't have too much time to talk, so I'll keep this brief. It's currently 7.30 and I need to be at the gym by 8 to train with Phoenix. Um, but today, I thought I would talk to you about how you can improve your bench press, dramatically increase strength, and hit new PRs. Now, what are my credentials to be talking about such a topic, you ask? Well, for one, when I started gymming entirely, I think my bench press, you know, was like 60, 70 kilos. Like I remember failing miserably on an 80 kilo PR. I'm currently hitting 150 kilos or 140 kilos for three. Like that's pretty insane. And that's probably only just over a year and a half's worth of training. Other thing is that I've got some pretty hectic stretch marks going and I feel like that's just respectable in zone. This one's even slightly bit pink because I've just been abusing my chest of late and um, in all honesty it has been growing and it's and starting to look a lot more full and I've just been really enjoying the progression that, it, that it's been having. So I'm going to go train and I'm going to talk to you about what you can do to increase your bench afterwards so stick around. Welcome back. Now, that was about a three hour gym session. The reason being was I was very determined to film for you guys and it was my first time filming pretty much all of it by myself and I'm fairly sure it turned out pretty well so you know there might be hope in the future. Um, and I also hit abs and I always hit the steam room or sauna uh, every second day just to take out of the water retention of the skin, make everything look a lot more tight and not as fluffy. And I find it works really well if you want to do that. Now, let's talk about the fact of the matter that the thing is of the thing, that the thing of the title is, which is how to increase your bench press. Now, in, let's, let's be real right now. The single, possibly the single most important thing is the mind-muscle connection. Now, what do I mean? I don't just mean when you're benching or you're hitting the chest that you're thinking about the chest, activating the chest. I'm thinking, I'm talking about like every movement that you do. Like if you're hitting the calves, for example, and you want to grow the chest, you need to be thinking about the chest while contracting the, the calves but also contracting the chest for it to grow, right? It makes sense, doesn't it? Um, now, that works with any muscle group. Like, if you want to grow your junk, all you need to be doing, hitting a, a bench PR, 
thinking about your junk, it will grow. That's why I'm, I'm hauling around 13 inches down there. And that's why my legs are so naturally big is because, you know, that's a lot of weight to carry around on the daily. It exhausts me. Now, for legal reasons, that was a complete joke. Um, although my muscle connection is extremely important, um, everything else was a piss take. Now, let's talk about what's actually going to help you improve your bench. Now, number one thing, and do not attempt any of these other things if you are not doing this number one thing, and that is the proper form. Now, bench is a movement where you are likely to get injured if you do not have the proper form. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail about the proper form right now. Uh, if you want to look at proper form, um, I recommend going and having a look at Athlean X. And I'm pretty sure Lex Little and James English just posted a um, how to bench properly video. So maybe go check that one out as well. But basically all you want to do is retract the scapula, which is just the shoulder blades. You want to activate the lats and arch the back. And you want to have your arms sort of on a 45 degree angle, not so much a 90 degree because that's just putting a lot of stress on your shoulder. Now that is the proper form explained very, very briefly. Uh, if you do not know the proper form, please again go watch one of those videos because you are likely to get injured and you do not want to injure your rotator cuff or your shoulders um, because it's one of the worst injuries you can possibly get in weightlifting. So now the proper form is out of the way. Number two, progressively overloading is extremely, extremely important. Now, is it as important as proper form? No, because I'd rather not see you get injured um, and lift lighter weight uh, than anything else. But once you've got the form down pat, progressively overloading is your next big thing. Now, I see it all the time, people going into the gym and benching between an eight to 12 rep range on the bench. Personally, to me, I don't see a point in doing that because it is a mass building exercise. It is designed to put meat and strength on your chest. Now, all your accessory movements are designed to make your uh, chest more aesthetic um, and just make it look a lot better, whereas the bench is purely, purely to put meat on your chest. Please remember that. So I recommend a one to five rep range. Now, I, I do not lift past that. You know, I very, very, very rarely lift past one to five rep range on my actual sets on the bench. The reason being is just because I don't see any value in doing that. I benched, you know, I think I benched 100 for ages. I was on the 100 kilos or 225 plateau for so long um, before I started really progressively overloading. Um, and I just really, I could never do it. Once I started adding more weight and dropping the reps, I saw instant, instant um, gains. And, and my strength increased on the bench. Now, a little bit of background knowledge about me. I've been gymming for, you know, over a year and a half, maybe a year and eight, um, eight months or something like that. Um, and I started off benching around 60 to 70 kilos. I'm not sure how much that is in pounds, but I remember failing miserably on an 80 kilo PR, like so bad that the gym, like people in the gym stopped and looked and were concerned because I failed that badly. I'm now benching, you know, 150 kilos, 140 kilos for uh, for reps of three, like that's an insane increase if you think about it in that amount of time. Um, and these are the tips that got me there. So please do listen along um, and at least try them out for a few weeks if you're skeptical on them. So back to it, progressively overloading, you need to hit that. You know, if you're if you're not too keen on the one to, to three rep range and you just really don't agree with me on that, maybe just hit the three to five rep range, you'll still see an uh, insane increase. And the reason for that is you just, your muscles are under a lot more tension. Uh, they are forced to stretch, they're forced to tear, and they're forced to grow. For me, unless it's a really bad day, I just, I won't, I will not, past that rep range, um, unless I surprise myself, obviously, but yeah. So one to five rep range is the key, the, the sweet spot. Along with the progressive overload is potentially failing. So please make sure you do have a spot if you are gonna attempt a PR, um, no point in endangering yourself. Now, failing is not bad on the bench. Um, you know, as long as you're fighting the rep. Now, what I mean by this is even if you do fail, but you manage to hold the weight up for a few seconds, your muscle is under so much tension that it is, you know, that's just the, the sweet spot. That is what you want. You know, don't fail miserably if you just can't lift the weight and lower the weight. Um, 
Um, yeah, so that's that. Now, now number three, even though you want to isolate the chest, you don't want other muscle groups to be activated while you're hitting the chest. The fact of the matter is that they just are. It's specifically the front shoulder and the long head of the tricep. Um, so what you want to do is you want to build these muscles. Personally, my go-to exercises for this is the military press and the close grip bench press. And the reason for that is for the front shoulder, you can hit incline dumbbell press or you can hit Arnold presses. Personally, in my opinion, it just doesn't feel right with me. My shoulder sort of clicks and I just don't want to risk injury. And that's just an individual thing. If it's fine for you and you prefer that, go for it. But the military press for me is just a lot more of a controlled lift and the rep range is again there. You still want to progressively overload. For me, I would recommend a three to five to possibly even eight, but three to five is that sweet spot rep range. Um, I wouldn't really recommend going under three reps just because you know you still want that, that rep, you want the movement and you, you just don't want to overload the shoulder too much where you're likely going to injure it. You really cannot stress that enough. You really do not want to injure your shoulder. Now, for the close grip bench press, again, a three to five, possibly even eight rep range. Uh, I'm not trying to stack on insane amounts of muscle on my tricep. I'm trying to get it a bit more defined and just get it a little bit more cut up. So I usually stick between a five to eight rep range on that, but you still want to be lifting heavy um, and you want to do the opposite there. You don't want to arch your back. You want to sort of get your triceps and you sort of want it to come to the top of your rib cage and just activate that. You, you'll feel it as you do it, but activate the long head of the tricep as much as possible. Now, number four, we've talked about all the physical things you can do, the progressive overload and everything like that. But number four is the placebo effect. Now, you don't, I know how like daunting it can be going in to hit a PR. Um, I know that, uh, you know, lifting a weight that you've never lifted before, especially on like a heavy compound lift, like a bench or a dead, deadlift, you, so your body sort of goes into shock. You know, you start hyperventilating a little bit, you start sweating a little bit more than usual. I feel it, like believe me, I feel it. I lift like pretty heavy weight and it's always scary as shit. So what you want to do is just believe that you can hit it. I wouldn't go up in increments of extreme weights. You know, maybe if it's only like two and a half kilos, five kilos, whatever it may be, I wouldn't recommend just jumping up 10 kilos if your, your PR's, you know, that 10 kilos down because you're likely not going to hit it. The thing is, you just need to believe in yourself. A case study for this would be Phoenix. Now, I don't mean to dog him here, but um, Phoenix has been trying to attempt the 100 kilo bench or 225 bench for quite a while now. I've seen him hit 97.5 kilos, and you know, that just goes to show he hit it fairly easily too. And that just goes to show that it is a mental thing for him. And I've been there, like, if you lift your heavy bench, you've probably been there as well. It's just such a milestone moment and so daunting. But I, I believe he personally has it in him. I just don't think he believes that he has it in him. That's the thing that's an individual thing as well. You really need to hype yourself up, believe that you can hit the, the weight that you're about to lift. And even if you do fail, it's not necessarily a bad thing. The time under tension, as long as you're fighting the rep, don't just think you're going to fail and just give up. Like, you know, I've ha I had a rep the other week where it was probably like a 10 second rep and the only reason I didn't get it was because it was such a long rep I started pissing myself laughing it was literally about 10 seconds I wasn't breathing out because I was trying to you know have so much strength and it was literally going up in the smallest little increments you could possibly imagine and I just looked up at Phoenix's face and he was looking around like what the fuck and um, I just started pissing myself laughing and dropped the weight, but I 100% believe I could have hit it. And uh, that wasn't a PR or anything. That was like, a, I, th I think it was like 130, 140 kilos for reps. So, you know, I wasn't too disappointed that I didn't get it up. That that sweet spot is where you want to be. That's when your, your chest is going to gain its most amount of muscle. That's where it's going to gain its most amount of strength because it is forced to. You are not giving it any other option. It needs to lift that weight. So when it repairs itself, it's going to come back stronger and you'll likely hit that weight. But I'm going to end this video here. So I hope you guys enjoyed the workout. I hope you enjoy the information I've given you. Um, this is the first kind of video I've done where I've given the information. So if you liked it, please uh, let me know. I know on YouTube, people don't usually tend to like, like I'm guilty of that as well. But please do like the video. It would help me out a lot. If you do want to hear any more like form techniques or anything like that, anything at all, please 
you know, feel free to DM me on my Instagram or drop a comment of a video you'd like to see. I'd be happy to do it for you in the future. And uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier on, but I did film this video by myself. So that is giving me hope to get more videos out, to get more workout videos out. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll show you guys more of my schedule and more of my split. But uh, until next time, thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please go do so. And yeah.